like many people, I always enjoy a good puzzle. Some puzzles are fun for a few minutes or hours, and then they fade away, and others stick around in my mind for a very long time. The puzzle of how to figure out the Dora Bella Cipher is one of those puzzles that just floats around in the back of my head. The Dora Bella Cipher is an enciphered letter written by the composer Edward Elgar to a Miss Dora Penny in 1897. Elgar would call Dora Penny Dora Bella. So she never deciphered it, and its meaning remains unknown to this day. The cipher, consisting of 87 characters spread over three lines, appears to be made up from 24 symbols, and each symbol has one, two, or three uh, approximate semicircles that are oriented in one of eight directions. The orientation of several characters is ambiguous, and there's a small dot that appears after the uh, fifth character on the third line. This dot is extremely important to what I'm about to say. Without context, everybody's guess at what this thing is remains equally valid. However, we should quickly reiterate over what some people think it is. There's the hidden note theory that says that this is an enciphered message. There's the hidden melody theory, which says this is trying to describe a tune. And then there's the hidden location theory that says this is how you find something in some place. In 2007, the Elgar Society advertised a Dora Bella Cipher competition to mark the 150th anniversary of Elgar's birth. A number of entries were received, but none of these were really found to be satisfactory. A few YouTubers also claimed to prove that it's one thing or another thing, and you know the proof didn't really offer much proof of anything because you know absence of evidence does not equal evidence of absence. And so it is that whilst I don't have a solution, I do want to throw some light on the subject. Like many people, my first thought was that this is a straight substitution cipher. So I did what every programmer would do, and I wrote routines to test this. I ended up with lots of lines like this, none of which, you know, were in the least bit close to anything recognisable. So next I tried to brute force it. After a little over 63 million attempts, I found the word solved. This is the cipher, and this is the message and you can see here the word that was found in it. After another 111 million attempts, I had found the word meaning. Again, here is the cipher, here is the message, and here is the word that was detected in the middle of it. After another few hundred million attempts, I was still only pumping out sporadic words like admire. After another 444 million attempts, almost 445 million attempts, we had this cipher and this message. As you can see, these words are literally showing up as like the only tangible bit of English in a pile of gibberish. So that idea really failed, and so I went back to the drawing board. One Swiss website's theory was that the cipher is shaped like a compass rose. This is an absurd notion to me as a British person. Clearly, the generally accepted key should be the British flag. Or is it? To understand why, we need to go back to the times of antiquity. Let's look at pig pen ciphers for a second. In this arrangement, you encipher by drawing the shapes the letters fit in, along with any dots that denote which set of pig pens that shape resides in. This is a well-known method dating from the Middle Ages. Note the dots, denoting which of the two grids that the shapes should fit in. This is very, very important. So I wondered if what he'd done is a pig pen variation like this. If you look at the cipher, he doesn't use the centre boxes. Things only point outwards. Also note the dot above the symbol in line 3. Everyone else that I've seen looking into this has skipped that dot. It's part of the cipher. Some people, in trying to be helpful by rewriting the code, have transcripted this incorrectly, taking out that dot. The issue is still what order to plug in the letters, and I've spent ages rearranging these, trying to look for an answer that was probably under my nose all along. Also of interest was the diagonal pens that come from the Neo-Templar cipher used by the Freemasons back in the 1700s. The reason it's of interest is this Elgar note from 1920. Whilst Elgar has written out a key that suggests a substitution cipher, underneath we can clearly see him playing with pig pen ciphers. These are circles rather than squares, though. 
I had more important things to do, but I did want to surface my theory that maybe the Union Jack is the key. After all, Elgar was fairly patriotic with his music. But then again, also, I wanted to surface the fact that it looks like it could be a pig pen cipher of some type because of that dot which then somebody has gone and removed from the cipher in subsequent versions causing everybody else to go down the wrong path. If you understand how older ciphers work you can clearly see this. If you have no idea how older ciphers work you wouldn't know that that was even part of the cipher. Hopefully somebody else will see this and pick up the torch carrying my additional thoughts along too. Maybe if I get the time in the future I'll come back to this but for anyone looking into this puzzle right now, I have two words for you. Good luck.